Hello everybody, in this lecture we will be solving 1998 IMO problem number 3. Here is a view of this problem. For any positive integer n, let d of n denote the number of positive divisors of n, I guess this is standard, uh, including 1 and n itself. For example, if you consider d of 12, you, you need to first find out the uh, positive divisors of 12 which are basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12 as a result we would get 6 uh, and continuing the reading the problem determine all positive integers k such that uh, this equation holds for at least 1n alright so what values of k are attainable basically Okay, so if you start with n is equal to 1, let's test a few things. Uh, we get that d of 1 squared divided d of 1, which is simply d of 1 divided by d of 1, and that's equal to 1. So this is a legit value for k. So 1 works. How about n is equal to 2? So we have d of 2 squared divided by d of 2, which is d of 4 divided by d of 2, d of 4, the positive divisors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4, so we have 3 of them, divided by uh, the positive divisors of uh, 2 are 1 and 2, so this won't give us any integer value. We can move on, n is equal to 3, d of 3 squared divided by d of 3, that would be equal to d of 9 divided by d of 3, now, d of 3 has two divisors, 1 and 3 positive divisors, um, and 9 has positive divisors 1, uh, 3, and 9. So, again, 3, and this won't work again. How about n is equal to 4? d of 4 squared divided by d of 4, which is d of 16 divided by d of 4, that would be equal to, so again, 4 has 3 uh, divisors, positive divisors. 16 has the divisors 1, 2, uh, 4, 8, and 16, 5 of them. Again, that won't work. So this, uh, all right, so um, more or less we understand the mechanics, I mean, but this is not the right way to proceed. At least, uh, well, at least we have one of the k that works, but... I'm not sure if, how far I need to go until I will be able to get the second guy because when n is equal to 5, I will have d of 25. The divisors of 25 are 1, 5, and 25, so we have 3 of them divided by d of 5. 5 has 2 divisors. Again, it won't work. So maybe I should go even further down, which uh, at the moment I do not want. So what we will do is, in fact, let's generalize this thing and let's uh, introduce some abstraction. So, so far we have n is equal to 1, created one value for k, that's great. So for the rest of the discussion, let's focus on n is greater than or equal to 2. I already know the, the next 3 won't give me anything, but still let, let, let's keep that. And let the prime factorization of n, uh, standard uh, e1, da da da, p sub k, uh, e sub k, uh, in fact, I don't want it to confuse it with the k that I'm interested in, so let's change it to r. So if this is the uh, factorization, the prime factorization of n, then all of you guys know very well that d of n uh, would be equal to e sub 1 plus 1, e sub r plus 1, this product. And in a similar way, n squared is equal to p sub 1, 2, e1, p sub r, 2, e r, as a result, uh, d of n squared is simply equal to 2e1 plus 1 up to uh, 2er plus 1. Okay, now we can find this uh, fraction here. So therefore, we have d of uh, n squared divided by d of n, which is simply equal to 2e1 plus 1, uh, 2er plus 1. And then e1 plus 1, da da da, er plus 1. So we want this 
to be an integer and we would like to see for what values of n would this give us an integer right so that's that's the goal so actually uh, we can see that here there is a um, you have a product of terms which uh, which look like of this form right so in that sense you can think of this as a uh, finite uh, product of uh, fractions right fractions of uh, the form uh, 2e plus 1 over e plus 1 so what positive integers can be written in this uh, in this format right so that's uh, as a product of uh, fractions of this which looks like this so in fact uh, when we investigate this we realize that all the terms in the numerators are all odd so the denominator can be anything odd or even we don't know but the, the terms in the numerator are all odd but then to make this integer we need to make sure that everything in the denominator disappears right so somehow will be cancelled out with the things in the numerator and hopefully there will be still some numbers remaining in the numerator and those numbers would be odd right so this would imply, imply therefore that if this product has an integer value then it must be the case that um, that that integer k is odd so if it is integer, then it must be odd. Is the argument clear? Huh? Because we want to clean all the terms in the denominator eventually so that we can get an integer. But for to do that, it needs to cancel out with some terms in the numerator, which all the terms in the numerators are odd. So therefore, the remaining terms when multiplied, whatever is remaining in the numerator, assuming that everything in the den denominator has been cleared, that wasn't the case, for instance, here, by the way. But uh, but whenever we have an integer, that would be the case. And then, so you have a product of odd numbers remaining in the numerator, which will give you k as odd. So therefore, all that remains is, uh, we have kind of a, like a gut feeling that uh, can we hit every single odd number here? So far, we know that k equals 1. We can hit that term. So can we hit the other terms the, all the odd terms or we can only eat uh, we can only hit some of them uh, i claim that uh, we can hit actually all of them so i'm going to uh, prove the following uh, converse statement that uh, every uh, uh, every um, claim let's write it as a claim claim every uh, odd k uh, greater than or equal to 1 huh? um, 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 can be uh, represented as such and when I say such I mean this this form as a finite product of uh, fractions of the following form so in order to prove that proof let's use induction um, um, uh, well, an induction on k, obviously, and we have already uh, looked into the base case, and we know that k equals 1 works. So, therefore, now, uh, assume that k is greater than or equal to 3, an odd integer uh, greater than or equal to 3, and assume also that, uh, by the, in, uh, the, 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 let's assume uh, also, so assume, this holds and um, um, all uh, positive uh, odd integers, huh? odd integers less than less than k can be represented huh? as a product uh, of. Um, as a finite product of uh, fractions of the following form right um blah 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 okay so you understand what i mean here as a product of this of the following form um so now uh, assuming this now we need to prove that we can do the same thing for k itself as well
okay so everything every odd integer less than k can be represented in this format as a, as a, as a finite product of fractions of the following form we need to show that k itself can also be uh, represented in the same way so for this i would like to consider this very simple trick so let's consider the number uh, k plus one i know k itself is odd right so k is an odd number k plus one is even even and as an even integer uh, let's assume that it can be represented as 2 to the power r times l where l is odd uh, in fact i don't want to confuse it with the r that i uh, represented above so let's just write it as s where s and l uh, are integers and l is odd as i uh, as i mentioned so then we we know that uh, it implies and because s is greater than or equal to 1 right because we know it's even so s is at least 1 so this implies that k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2l but when this is the case this implies that l is strictly less than k uh, because we have k is greater than or equal to 3 but then l is an odd number strictly less than k by the uh, induction hypothesis this implies that L uh, can be represented uh, as a finite product, right? As a finite product of um, fractions uh, in the form uh, like we did earlier, 2e plus 1 over e plus 1. But then, uh, therefore, all we need to show then is that but then k which is an odd integer greater than l uh, therefore for if k has to be uh, represented uh, is to be represented in the same format it must be the case that this implies therefore uh, maybe i should use this therefore all i need to show uh, that uh, the expression uh, l uh, sorry k uh, k over l k over l is in fact can be represented in the uh, uh, k over l can be uh, also represented also represented um, as a finite product product uh, of the same form right of the same form right that would make sense because if k consists of products of similar form and l products of some other form they would cancel out and what will remain is the quotient will also be able to be represented as a finite product of the same form right so does that make sense okay so if that's the fact now uh, we can go ahead and uh, look closely so let's sort of start by uh, naming the difference here k minus l as j and from the fact that uh, so let let this be the case and also knowing that k plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power uh, I think we decided to call it 2 to the power s uh, times l uh, which is equal to um, 2 to the power s replace l with uh, k minus uh, j k minus j here uh, uh, and uh, we can uh, compute the value of k here by moving things around for instance uh, I can uh, move the j here to the left hand side we would have 2 to the s j plus 1 which is equal to uh, factor out the, the k 2 to the s minus 1 and now finally uh, k will come out as uh, 2 to the s j plus 1 divided by 2 to the s uh, minus 1 and so therefore huh, uh, this would imply so go back to the claim so let's have a look at k over l so k over l therefore is equal to k over huh, using this notation l replace it with k minus j and we can further uh, write this as uh, 1 over and move the k down so 1 minus j over k and this thing now uh, we uh, can substitute for uh, j and k now, uh, for k I should say, um, so that would be equal to 1 over uh, 1 minus, so the j remains in the numerator, so the k we just switch these, 2 to the s minus 1, 2 to the s j plus 1. 
And now this is uh, finding the common denominator. So that's simply equal to, um, um, let's uh, go back. Uh, so it's, and then bringing it up. So I have two to the SJ plus one uh, divided by um, two to the SJ plus one minus two to the SJ um, minus J. So these terms will cancel out and I would have 2 to the sj plus 1 divided by 1 minus j. No, uh, this one is a plus j. Sorry for that. So this is a plus j. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1 plus j. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And, and finally, now we can express this in the uh, desired format by applying the following trick. So I can just write this as a telescoping uh, product in the following way I can write it as 2j plus 1 over j plus 1 times uh, 4j plus 1 over uh, 2j plus 1 and so on all the way to uh, 2 to the s um, s let's do it in two steps 2 to the s minus 1j plus 1 divided by uh, 2 to the s minus um, right, minus 2j plus 1, and finally 2 to the s j plus 1, divided by 2 to the s minus 1j plus 1. Now, is that clear? And, and I claim that all of these fractions, obviously, are of this format, right? So, it is clear here, because here there's 2 times 2j here, and then there's a 2j here. So, it makes sense. But is this even right? So, of course it is, because look at these. So they beautifully cancel out. So which will cancel out with the next term. This one will this one. And with this one. And we will be back in our term. So therefore it means that it is possible to express k over l as a finite product of. Um, um, yeah as a finite product of, um, of fractions of the given form. Right. So of this form. And as a result. Uh, this uh, completes uh, the uh, induction step uh, and uh, and we have just shown that for all odd uh, uh, positive integers uh, we can in fact uh, express them um, express them as a finite product of fractions of this as a result going all the way up it is therefore possible to reach every single k odd integers uh, by different values of n. I don't know what these values of n are, right? Well, or I should rather say that I don't care. <laughs> it's possible with this we can make easily come up with a construction, but uh, it is possible to reach every single k and, uh, and that solves the problem. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it and looking forward to see you guys in our next lecture.